for, oh yeah, she needs to be cleaned. An old fashioned bar and cleaning, that's what we're gonna do. The YouTube notifications, you know, sometimes it's really fast and it's like, sometimes it's really slow. Sometimes like it's bang, everybody's here. And then sometimes it's not. Are we gonna get a, a burst of people for the barn cleaning? All right, let's get this set up. I gotta turn off the, uh, the barn cam here that I've got going. Hello Chris, how are you? My duck fans, my my enablers, my supporters. Okay. I gotta switch this around because I gotta put the fisheye lens on. Ducks are coming in. I gotta be careful they don't escape. Well, I'm behind, Chris. I'm supposed to be weed whacking, but we got uh, um, uh, black clouds blowing in, so I've got to change my plans here and get this done, just in case it starts raining while I'm working on the weed whacker or weed whacking itself. Okay. Uh, okay, I gotta switch this around. I'm just wondering. I wonder if I can get away. That's not. You guys don't. There's actually. There's no. Is there? There's no dead kitten showing up in the. Uh, I wonder if I could do it this way. Without the fish eye today. Let me just see. How's this? That's not bad. I, is that the fish eye, guys? I'm not a big fan of the fish eye. It looks so fake. Uh, which area of the glass? Well, no, not really. Eh? It's pretty limited. Oh, unless I steal that. Okay, I gotta do this. Okay, we're gonna end this stream. Um, whoever's over here, I'm gonna end this. Okay, let's try this. Let's try the wide angle lens on this. Does that work? Oh, not really, huh? It gets that corner. Well, we gotta do the fisheye. Oh, I hate the fisheye lens. You know, it shows everything, but it's so distorted. And if I put the fisheye lens on this side, with the uh, the kitten, <laughs> there you guys go. So you get the kitten in the deal. It's like uh, I'm working. Go for a beard, huh? I've got a beard. Okay. Um, I gotta switch the camera around. That's what I gotta do. I gotta flip it over. All right. Only 37 people want to watch me work. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not gonna have. It, uh, that many people here bothering me, I guess, eh? <laughs> or being, not bothering me, but being my, uh, uh, watching over my shoulder. That's what I meant to say. If it was a bother, guys, I, I wouldn't, sh I, I'd just clean the barn and, and not share it. Okay. Flip. Why is it doing this? I'm having problems, guys. Technical difficulties. All right, there we go. Okay. I'm going to put the fisheye lens on this side because then you don't see the dead kitten. Okay, there we go. Alright. How's that? Look at the little sneaks coming in, eh? Oh, there we go. Well, it's not that bad, eh? Well, it's not the best. We'll, uh, we'll use this camera for later when we do the, uh, the ducklings and the fresh straw. They're guaranteed to give us a job. 
a job, a show I mean, jobs. <laughs> yeah, I've got a job. i got to clean the barn before it starts raining. Alright, okay ducks, i got to put the barricade up, which I don't think is going to do much good because I'm thinking you guys are all going to jump it. I'm thinking I need a bigger barricade. I can't believe the amount of food that they're blowing through. <laughs> I've got exactly, exactly enough food that Monday morning I'm going to be whipping in to pick up 50 bags uh, at the feed store first thing in the morning. But the ducks are going to give us a show because guaranteed we're going to have a straw rush. Oh no. There's the rain. I'm right back, guys. I got to put the uh, cover on the terror deck. It's raining. So I gotta put this camera right by the window so I can grab it quickly. Unfortunately. Because there's a huge amount of black hogs coming up on the other side of the, uh, the highway. So I gotta be ready here to grab this camera just in case. I tell you, I'm, I'm learning a real lesson this year on this uh, live streaming outside thing. It's a nasty lesson, I'll tell you that much. Okay. You wouldn't believe the black clouds out there, guys. It's like full-blown black, just blew in out of nowhere. Yeah.
it's freaking nuts, man. It wasn't this bad like not even a couple minutes ago, and there's a like, block everywhere now. Well, I guess it was a good call <laughs> to do this right now. I could have been working on the weed whacker and looked outside and the garage and seen it raining and be like, oh no, all the cameras are outside. Plus I gotta put flip over duck back in the hospital. I just had to, to risk flip over duck in the trench. I think a flip over duck's got a problem. Maybe he's got an inner ear infection. I don't know. He's got absolutely no stabilization at all to him. He's just a wobble ass. Okay, so I wanted to make a, a, a big announcement. Um, a big thank you, Ashley. I don't know how many people I got here tonight. Let me just double check. I want to make sure there's enough people here. Oh, I can't see. What do we got? A hundred? No. Forty? Oh, I can't see. Um, I've got a big thank you to say. Okay, we got 92 people. Okay, this morning we had a donation on the GoFundMe campaign for $500 to help get the ball rolling here next week from Inga and uh, she did it anonymously. I asked her on Facebook if I'm, if I'm allowed to, to say thank you publicly and she told me yes, go ahead. She didn't really want to but because she didn't do it for the thank you, she just did it because it was the right thing to do. Um, and just like I do this, it's because it's the right thing to do, is to help people who need help, the homeless, um, you know, to get some good quality food. But I want to say thank you to her, and I want you guys to, you know, give her a big, you know, big thumbs up, give her a thank you in the comments. Uh, you know, $500 is a huge sum of money, huge, and, uh, and she just did it out of the kindness of her heart. So, thank you very much, Inga. Uh, I appreciate it, and I appreciate your help in the moderating. Uh, on the show, um, I, I just appreciate the support. But I, I wanted you to, I wanted to make a, a video about this because it was just like five hundred dollars, a lot of money, you know. And uh, you know, to help somebody out on a on a, on a, on a mission like this, uh, that's her heart is in the same place as mine. And I just want to say thank you. So that's uh, why the video or the stream is called "Thank You." And a barn cleaning is because I wanted to say thank you. Uh, I didn't want to leave it anonymous, but I, I got her permission first to say her name. So, so everybody, give her a, 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 a big hug of love there in the comments. Put a little emoji, uh, you know, say thank you, all that kind of neat stuff. And uh, that's what I wanted to tell you. So I gotta get cleaning because we got a, we do have a storm blowing in. Just like the weatherman said. <laughs> Oh, and shotgun update. Anybody that watched the shotgun video, I found the problem why it was jamming. I, I had a Remington a tube extension that uh, I bought for the gun, but it was only a, it only allowed you to extend it to from four rounds to seven rounds, and the one that I bought it extended it to nine rounds. Now the tube compared to the Remington was five inches longer than a Remington tube. To hold the extra round, but the spring compared to the Remington spring on the extension was only two inches longer compared to the Remington spring. So the Remington uh, tube spring was only like two inches shorter, but it was five inches shorter in the tube length. So the problem was, even though that I had cut it off and got rid of the bind. And I, and I took my Dremel, I took my sander, and I made it nice and smooth inside so nothing could bind. It didn't, ma it didn't matter. The problem was is that the spring wasn't strong enough.
to push the shells out, bottom line, because it wasn't water compared to the rain. I don't know how you could have a tube that's five inches longer but only needs spring three inches or two inches longer. I was in the garage and I, and I laid them out on the on the, the bench. And then because I, I said, okay, they look like the same size. And sure enough, only two inches difference. So no matter what I did to it, I got, there's no way I could have fixed it. So that's the deal. Because that's the last thing you want to happen, is you know when you get a chance to get a shot off, especially if you get a chance to get multiple shots off, like if he's out in the open and you know you missed the first time and you can get a second shot off, and then have it so that the shell doesn't feed. That's just like, oh, it'll send you over the edge. Because you hardly ever, ever get a chance for a second shot. So nothing worse than getting a chance for a second shot or a third shot. And, you know, you, you can't feed ammo into the, into the shotgun. I'm confident if he shows up, I'll get him. Because I was really, I was pushing it fast. Like I was running and I was just trying to do a, a, a shot as fast as possible. Normally I don't do when I'm shooting, you know, a critter. I slow it down a bit to make sure that, you know, I'm right on. That was like extreme speed as fast as I could do it. You normally never have to shoot that fast. You usually got a, you know, a split second to get your wits to get to pull the shot off. So if I can hit the pizza box, you know, in action style shooting, uh, I should be able to hit Mr. Fox when he shows up. Because I know he's gonna show up. They will. Because see, the thing is, they know there's food here, right? They know those ducklings are just, just too much to resist. All that chirping sound and so much of it, it's probably just driving that fox nuts. That's why he's circling the pen. That's why he keeps circling the pen. He's been circling the pen for over a week, two weeks actually, come to think of it. Like I know he hasn't gotten any because you know, we haven't had anything out. We haven't had the ducks out. Oh, they knocked the barrier over. Get out, out, out ducks. I don't want them in here. I want, I want, to, I want to get this job done. I, I think I got to get taller plastic for the barrier though. Because they're jumping right over it. It means nothing to them. They're defiant. <laughs> yeah, so Mr. Fox, I, I know uh, he's going nuts right now. Like it's cracking him right up all this food. And he's not, uh, he's not getting any of it. He's going to make a mistake and come into the yard during the day and I'm going to get a shot off and that's going to be it. That'll be it. He'll just be over. Or maybe one night I'll get a shot off when, you know, if I wake up. The problem is, guys, I'm so tired at night. I, I like... It's like when Doug does that bark thing and, he, and, I, and I jump out of bed, I'm so groggy that I, uh, there's no way I could shoot. I, I wouldn't be able to shoot with any accuracy, that's for sure.
Okay, now it, there's blue sky blowing in. That's only putting the pressure. Honestly, I think it's the weather that's wearing me out the most. Because I can never do what I want to do during the day. I'm constantly dealing with this rain, rain, rain. And the forecast this coming week, every single day, rain. I'm worried that it's going to be rain all summer. Like we're not going to have like a, a, a any sun. Or if we are, it's always going to be under, under the threat of rain. They're out there. They know what's coming. I'm going to put the feeders in here today though. I'm going to set the, I'm going to put the, the feeders in, straw, and then we'll let them in. Get out! Oh. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. The barrier and cut. Okay, how'd you go down? Up. Okay, out. Out, out, out. Out, come on. Trying to put the gate up. That's what I'll do. There. Ah, oh, now they can't get in. I don't know why I didn't do the gate before. <laughs> now I can get it all set. Because we're going to have a, a, a straw today. It's going to be a good one. It's a good one every day, actually. So anybody that's joining late that wasn't here earlier, uh, I've got a big thank you, which I did earlier, but I'm going to do it again, is uh, Inga, a fan of ours uh, of the show, donated $500 this morning on GoFundMe. Huge thank you for that. I emailed the, uh, the girl, uh, or the woman, I should say, in Ottawa that said that she wants to come up. She's a, uh, she's a, uh, a landscaper, she's got her own uh, equipment, and I emailed her to see if she wants to come out and cut weeds this week. So this week it's going to happen, because i got to get these ducks out. As we saw yesterday, they're ready to go out. But it's just far too dangerous right now with what you saw last night, in which I posted it on the Facebook page of 50 Ducks. Go to the link below this, uh, this stream. You'll see the Facebook page, click on it, and you can see a couple uh, people have, um, uh, uh, two people actually captured it on YouTube last night while they were watching it, and you can clearly see the fox running by the, uh, the pen. Like, you can see it. It's there. You can see it really good, actually. <laughs> I was shocked how good it turned out. It just shows you, you know, when you got that live stream running and people are watching it, you never know what you're going to see. And now you can see it, you know, the true uh, auction, auction, man. Ducks were freaking, they were running around, and the, it ran across the front, it stopped, took a quick view to its, its right, looking at the adult ducks, but it was, it was interested in the ducklings, that's what he wanted, it wanted ducklings, because it came up this side first, you could see all the ducklings run this way, and then it was at the front, and then the ducklings came to the, into the barn. And then when it was running that direction, it stopped briefly and took a bit of a glance over at the adult ducks. But it was interested in the babies. And that's because of the noise, all right? The, the babies are making so much noise.
wonder why I didn't use the gate before. Uh, it says I'm screwing around with that barricade. I can't believe three bags of food last night. That's crazy. Crazy, man. I bet it's a thousand birds, huh? 1,100 birds. But we really need to get them out on the lawn. Really bad. Really bad. Yeah, a little flip over duck out there, flipped over in the trench. So I gotta put her back in the hospital, I don't know. I got a bad feeling, flip over ducks just got a problem. Other than permanent, can't walk. It's really wobbly. I need a bigger hospital, but because I, I'm using a recycle pail for the hospital. And it's like two ducks in a recycle pail. It's pretty bad after one day. So after I do this, I gotta, I'm going to go into the garage and uh, get the weed whackers running. I got to get that one set up for Nathan, get the motor put on it, get it running, make sure it works. Fire up that new one, in which I want to do some cutting today. Do something at least, at least an hour. And I really, I, it's driving me nuts, this uh, long grass, because I know for a fact, as soon as the long grass is dealt with, the problem's gone. Like, it's that, it's that simple. I've been doing this enough years that I know that every time the cut, after the cut, it's just peaceful. You know, you can let everything go. You don't have to worry. Doug just sits at the edge of the swamp or the edge of the lawn, and he watches. He doesn't have to run around. Like last night, you know, when the duck sounded the alarm last night, Doug was running around in every direction uh, because he could smell it, but he couldn't tell where it was coming from. And that's hard on the dog because he's got a bad shoulder. You know, like he, he's, he's good at his job, but the problem is it's hard on him. So if I can make it easier, as in if everything's cut so that he can use his eyesight, then he just, you know, he's a lot smarter. He sits there and even if he smells it, he, he just sits and looks and waits. The problem is with the tall grass is that he smells it and he can't see it. So then he just starts running blindly looking for it. Like when he took off across the creek last night, you know, he smelled it in the swamp, took off down there and, uh, you know, went across the creek looking for it. Doug needs to see it. Because I know last year after he saw the fox and put the run on it, the fox never came back. The fox only had to get chased once and he never showed up again. Because I remember that so clear because uh, Doug put his foot through the screen door 
you know, catapulting himself off the deck to go get it. And I never saw the fox after that. Never made a, a sighting of it, never had a problem. It was stripping coyotes after that. Best case scenario <laughs> would be a, a coyote gets the fox. And the fox is gone. Because I'm not worried about a, you know the coyotes coming into the yard because they won't because of dug. I just gotta worry about the coyotes in the swamp. But if the swamp's cut, the coyotes won't go. They just, they won't. They, they they like to stay under cover. Oh, we got one that snuck in. He, he got through the the, the barrier. And they leave it to a duckling. Hey, they find a hole. Look out. <laughs> Little black one. He's uh he, he got through We've got a ton of ducks at the front of the barn. They're all sitting on the hill looking. They're waiting for the gate to open. the camera pointing in the wrong direction right now guys outside they're, they're pushing their bodies hard against the wire on the uh the gate Picking at the uh, the wire here, playing it like a, a harp. They love the fresh straw. Oh, it's so funny watching them. I love sharing that with you guys because it's it is epic to watch them all go crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna run up <laughs> to the garage, get some uh, bags of feed, fill all of these up. And then uh, move a camera around. I'll, I'll be right back.
It's an absolute frenzy at the gate outside. They know what is about what is about to happen. I just heard thunder outside. Weather forecast, duck adventure, dark clouds coming in. Okay, I'm gonna move uh, this camera. I'm gonna put it inside the window. I'm pointing out because I just have a hunch it's not a stable environment outside today. It was nice this morning, but it looks like it's changing. Oh yeah, you can feel the uh, the uh, the dampness in the air. Relax, dogs. <laughs> They're pecking at the uh, the gate. It's going to be a good rush. I'm going to set up the other tripod with the iPad for a, a ducking rush. And I'll wrap up this uh, stream with you guys. For anybody that is watching. Okay, folks, I gotta steal uh, this uh, uh, Gorilla Grip thingy, thingy we were rigamajiggy. All right, we got people here? Yes, it does, we do, 157. Thank you very much. Uh, we will take those of Duck Adventure to another platform. Why are we taking that to another platform? Hello. 
You guys were having a conversation while I was working. Thanks, you're not even watching me work. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing, fellow Pe uh, fallen peach? Hang on here. Super chat, they do take 32%, but I had to turn it back on because uh, it was just stopping. Nobody was uh, supporting the cause. So unless I'm constantly begging, it, it doesn't seem to happen. Okay, another one just got through. You love watching me work? Well, that's what I told you guys I was going to do this year. I was going to share everything. <laughs> it's like, uh, but I got to steal this uh, Gorilla Pad thing off the front here. Okay, hang on. I need this, this, I need this right here, this thing. No. More of them have broken through. Here, I'll show you what's happening here. Um, because I'm going to end this stream here shortly. Oh, hang on. Okay, come on. I tell you, you know what they're, look at that. Look at that, see, they figured out how to get through. Oh, man. Okay, okay. You know what the thing is? Is that when the dead kitten is touching the screen, my touch screen won't work. How do they do that? They're sneaking through the tiniest crack is what they're doing. Like it's like not even a two inch crack. They figured it out and they're, the others are coming through. Okay, so I gotta, I'm gonna wrap this up. Once again, guys, thanks for watching me work here. Thank you very much for all the thumbs up that you gave that I didn't ask for. Greatly appreciate that. And uh, I once again, another big thank you to Inga for the huge $500 donation today on the GoFundMe site. Uh, she did it anonymously, but I, I got her permission to say her name and thank her publicly. And I just wanted to thank her again because that really, really helps us, gives us a big boost here. Because, uh, you know, well, next week or on Monday, I'm picking up another roughly, well, whatever $17 times 50 is. I'll be picking that up. And then uh, the following week after that, I got to pay for 100 bags of food because I officially will have picked up 100 bags in the month of June. So, you know, the dock expenses are climbing. So, Thank you very much, and I'm going to end this stream, and then we're going to uh, start another stream because I'm going to set up the iPad here for the Duckling Infamous Straw Rush, and uh, which is going to be pretty epic because I'll, I'll show you what's ha taking place here right now. Okay, come on. Oh, this, oh, oh mosquito. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Look at that. They're just losing it. Oh, the mosquitoes in this barn, guys, they hide in the corner. Look at that. All right, I'm going to end the stream, and we're going to get on to a duck straw rush.